The Quebec election is underway with provincial leaders making their pitches to voters. It's important to become more competitive. The CAC rejected it because they knew they couldn't fulfill their promises and now they're promising another thing that they know they can't deliver neither. If you want to talk about the economy, this is something that we will be talking about is a manpower shortage. The CAC has failed on the French language. We are before the most steep decline of the French language in Quebec's history. We will help the middle class. We will help the lower income people. But I'm sorry, higher income people don't need help from the government. Election Day in Quebec will be October 3rd. Where do the parties stand as they leap out of the starting blocks? Christian Bork is the executive vice president of Léger. Jonathan Montpetit is a senior investigative journalist with CBC News. And Emily Nicolas is a columnist with Le Devoir and Montreal Gazette. They're all in Montreal for us tonight. Christian, uh, let's start with you. At the beginning of the campaign, you're a pollster. Where do things stand in the polls? How are they all coming out so far? The CAQ has a 25-point lead on the Liberals uh, uh, from the get-go. Uh, a lot of the scenarios we are looking at now would be a sort of a, a modest victory for the CAQ would mean 80 out of 125 seats. Some people are thinking they could get up to 100 seats. So out of the blocks, people are saying, what kind of victory will the CAQ have? But it doesn't mean that the election will not have a lot of meaning. The two traditional major parties in the province could be almost, if not swipe, from uh, uh, from the National Assembly, the PQ in particular, are facing challenges. So are the Liberals. And how well would Q, will QS do, sort of Quebec Solidaire, with their uh, leader, who's sort of the number two in terms of the most popular leader? They could stand to win seats uh, uh, as well. So there are a lot of, uh, it's not who will finish number one. Basically, that's interesting, is who will finish number two, number three. Uh, and and uh, so, so it will still be an interesting race. I'm just shocked, Christian, by where the Parti Québécois is standing right now. I mean, this is a party that has been at the center of the political conversation since the 70s, right? Since René Lévesque won in 1976, yeah. they have really been a force uh, in many ways, even if they haven't always formed government. But to see them where they are right now in the polling, it's it's shocking. I mean, I can't believe they've fallen so far so fast. What's going on there, do you think? Yeah. Well, I, I think it's a change of, of uh, generations, but also of, of the axis of Quebec politics from federalist sovereignists, which dominated politics for 40, 50 years. That has been sort of swept away with this, this new sort of left to right axis with Quebec Solidaire on the far left, the CAQ plowing up the middle, leaving no room for the PQ and the Liberals, and then the new conservative, the Quebec Conservative Party uh, on the right. So are we actually seeing a change, uh, a change in the axis of how people position? position themselves in Quebec politics, I think so far we're saying, yes, this is happening. Yeah, Jonathan, I want to ask you about the Quebec Conservative Party and their leader, Eric Duhem. They've done very well under him. I mean, this was a non-entity, you know, before COVID, and now they have seemingly surged in the polls. You know, some suggest they might even be as high as second place. Um, obviously, it depends on which poll you're looking at, but some aggregators have them in second. What is happening here? Like, why are they picking up so much steam? Well, I think you said the the magic word, so to speak, for the Quebec Conservative Party, which is which is the pandemic. Um, when Eric Duhem took over the party uh, last year, he had already been a well known opponent of all the public health measures that Quebec was circulating, and he continued to hammer on that through, uh, through throughout his time a, a, as leader. Um, I think that the challenge for the party going forward, of course, will be on what other issues can they build uh, support or, or, or following. And, and, you know, one of the one of the things they're, they're trying to do, at least early on in the election, is is, is attack uh, Premier Legault's promises around uh, the third link, which is, uh, you know, this proposed bridge or tunnel in the Quebec City area, which is which is very big for for, for Quebec City people and may not resonate in the rest of the province. But this is a key issue uh, for uh, for the Conservative Party because that's one of the few areas where they can hope to win a seat. And I think um, it, the the kind of question about their support is that yes, it's around you know fifteen percent give or take, but it's not really concentrated in air, in any area, and so it's a big question mark whether they'll be able to translate that support into any kind of seat gain.
There's been a lot of talk about that third link. I've been hearing about that thing for so many years. <laughs> Every federal election campaign that comes up as well. And you're like, when are they going to build this darn thing, if at all? Um, Emily, uh, what do you think the ballot box question here is? I mean, we kind of went through this in Ontario. There wasn't really a clear one, but it did seem like voters were motivated by what's happening with inflation and the cost of living. Is that something that we'll see peak, uh, you know, sneak into the picture here too in Quebec? It seems to be what the CAC uh, wants uh, wants the ballot question to be about. Uh, their slogan is "Let's let's keep going." So they're they're very much not trying to draw any critical attention on their on what they've been doing in the last four years. They they seem to uh, think that people, although there's been obviously issues with the healthcare system, like like in other provinces, it seems to think that people will be very generous with them in that regard, and that uh, they'll they'll they want to keep you know building on. Uh, helping people with issues like affordability and inflation. There was just an announcement today about another check that might be uh, coming in December uh, for for people. Um, so so that's so that's definitely what they want the question the ballot question to be. I think for the liberals, uh, when they say in their slogan for vote for real real issues, uh, real solutions, they they're talking about the economy, but more. Uh, in, in a more critical way of what the CAC has been up to. Uh, I think uh, Quebec Solidaire wants people to vote for, as their slogan also says, the change of rewa, which means uh, completely shifting direction for for, for what the CAC uh, wants. So basically the, the ballot question there will be, do we keep going or, or do we actually completely change around what we've been doing, admitting that or, 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 or choosing to think that um, what we've been doing does not work and we want to send Quebec in a new direction. So um, the battle of this election is basically the battle to determine who has, who will, who will decide what the ballot question actually is. And depending on who you ask, uh, everybody will, will try to push the campaign in a different direction based on what ballot question is to their advantage or not. We were talking about the PQ and their fall from grace, but it does seem like the Quebec Liberal Party isn't doing all that well either. I mean, Mm -hmm. this does seem like, to me at least, sort of an existential crisis, right? Because the polling has them in a decent position, but that really is on the backs of their support among Anglophones and Allophones in the Montreal area, isn't it, Emily? Do you think, uh, what is this, like, where do they go from here? Do they ever rebuild their base among Francophone Quebecers or is it done for now? It's something that's been um, a long-term tread uh, for the Liberals. It's not. It's not just in the last months that they've been uh, struggling to garner support outside of the island of Montreal. Um, and um, it seems that they're caught between a rock and a hard place. Uh, they've been trying to expand outside of the Montreal region by tempering some of their historical. Um, stands on things like language, identity, um, trying to be, for example, uh, in support of a lot of the provision in Bill 96 initially, that kind of backfired and put them in trouble actually with their their traditional base uh, in Montreal, especially uh, amongst uh, folks in English Montreal. So now they're trying to also hold on to that and make sure that nobody uh, can actually uh, slide, uh, slip in and, and, and make them lose some of their uh, stronghold in the Montreal region. So it, that, I guess the best thing for the Liberals right now is, is, is if the campaign does not, um, does, does not have as a strong team anything that has to do with, let's call it identity politics, because whenever uh, the topic is on that, it makes them very, it, it puts them in a very difficult uh, situation where either they're, they're saying things that, that makes some of their bases feel betrayed or, um, they're, they're saying things that don't appeal to a lot of people who would uh, otherwise be cat holders. Okay, guys, let's leave it there and let's bring you back another time because that was uh, a good chat. I appreciate that. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.